Hi, this is David with David's Tutorials, and today I'm going to show you some basics about the find and replace function in Microsoft Word. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you the basics you need to know about this essential function, and we'll get into a couple of the more useful advanced functions. Just so you know, I'm making this tutorial on the June 2018 version of Microsoft Word as updated through Office 365. I'm running it on Windows 7 and I've run it on Windows 10 and several other operating systems. If you're running it on a different operating system, such as Mac or Linux, your shortcut keys may be different. There are many situations when you might need to use the find and replace function. For example, if you've created a long document referencing a company, but you need to change company to corporation, or perhaps you want to change all the instances of the word treasurer to be capitalized. Whenever you need to check the entire document to replace a word or a phrase or possibly a recurring error, find and replace is the way to go. The demonstration document I'm using is a copy of a set of bylaws for a nonprofit organization, a community band. Whenever you need to make large-scale corrections to any document, you should always make a copy of the document first, then make your corrections. Once you're certain your corrections are accurate, you can then delete the copy, but this will definitely keep you from accidentally corrupting your only copy of an important document. Let's get started. For our first example, let's do a simple find and replace. Let's say we have referred to the organization throughout the document as a company, but we had an attorney read through it and she advised us we should change the word company to corporation. Okay, we can do that. Without words replace function, doing this would be a nightmare. And you could never be sure you found all of the instances. However, with the replace function, it's a piece of cake. First, open the find and replace dialog box by pressing Control H. If you prefer using the ribbon bar, you should find the link to open the Replace dialog on the Home tab all the way to the right in the Editing area. To replace all the instances of Company with the word Corporation, simply enter Company into the Find What field and Corporation into the Replace With field. Then click the Replace All button. This will search the entire document from the current cursor position to the end of the document. At this point, the dialog will either tell you it's all done and the number of replacements, or it will tell you how many replacements it made and ask if you wish to start from the top of the document. This will allow you to be sure you've covered the entire document. So let's do that now. In the dialog box, I'm typing company, company in the find what box, and corporation in the replace with box. Now click replace all and we see the alert box that tells us it made 42 replacements and asks if we want to continue searching from the beginning. We click yes and we get an all done alert telling us the total number of replacements made. This is really all you need to know for the basic find and replace operations. However, Word has a much more robust capability than this simple method. Let's open up the Replace dialog again with Control H and look at what some of those advanced options are. To see the advanced features, if your dialog box looks like this and ends right below the row of buttons, simply press Alt-M or click the More button to expose the Search and Replace Options extension panel. While there are quite a number of powerful features in this Options panel, in this tutorial, I want to call your attention to and show you examples of just two of them. The first is the Match Case checkbox. Just as you would expect, placing a check in this checkbox will cause the Find and Replace function to be very strict about the case of the letters you enter in the Find What and the Replace With fields above. Let's demonstrate this. First, let's close the dialog box so we start in the normal editing mode. Next, I will select a word I want to replace with a different capitalization and double click on it to select it. Let's pick the word individual and propose to capitalize every occurrence of that word. Double click 
and now it's selected. If we now open the dialog box by pressing Control H, you can see the word we selected is already entered into the Find What field. This is a handy shortcut and can save a lot of typing if you use this feature frequently. Now let's check the Match Case box in the Search Options panel. Then enter a capitalized version of the word in the Replace With field. Capital I N D I. Let's get a little crazy here and capitalize the letter V as well. And we are entering the rest of the word now. Now we click on the Replace All button, and when we see the word in our document, you'll notice that both the first I and the V in all instances have been capitalized. If you decide you don't like the changes you just made, you can remove them by pressing the Control Z Undo Keystroke. Let's do that now. Control Z, boom! And now the capitalization is back the way it was. The other search options in the panel are also quite robust, but we'll leave those for another tutorial. For now, the only function I wanted to point out is the availability of special characters. You can get to these by clicking the special button at the bottom of your panel. Each of these options enters a code for the indicated character. Let's try a few of those right here. The two coded characters I have found most useful are the top two on this list, the paragraph mark and the tab character. But you may find good use for any of these others. It's worth playing around with them just to see how they work. But of course, do it on a copy of a document, not the original of something important. If, for example, you have a document with only single paragraph returns between paragraphs, and you want to convert that to double paragraph returns, to put spaces between the paragraphs, this is the capability you'd use to do that. Or, if you wanted to remove all paragraph returns or section breaks, you could do that as well. Just as an example, and for fun, let's remove all the paragraph returns in this whole document, leaving it as one massive paragraph. To do this, I first delete any content in the Find What field, then I insert the special character for the paragraph mark there. Be careful not to get the paragraph character down the list. That's a different item. Notice the code for the paragraph mark is caret p. It's good to know you can simply type that code into this field or the other field, and it will have the same effect as if you had selected it from the special character list. Next, in the Replace With field, I simply make sure it is completely empty. That means be sure there are even no spaces in that. If you do this, that's the way you totally remove something. You replace it with nothing. Then, when I click Replace All and complete the replacement, you will see the document consists of one massive paragraph. Oh my. You will also note the tab characters are still in place because we did not remove or replace those. Let's go to the Home tab and click the Show Hidden Characters button. See, it looks like a paragraph mark to see those tabs. Look in here now, you'll see there's an arrow that indicates where those tabs are. And they're there. Let's press Control Z now to undo that change and go back to a paragraph separated document. Control Z, done. Let's wrap this up with one final segment on selective replacement. Up to now, we have simply replaced all occurrences of the Find What field. But what if there are some instances that you don't really want to replace? That's what the Find Next and Replace buttons are for. These are the two buttons on either side of the Replace All button. Using the Find Next button, you can step through all instances of the text in the Find What field throughout the document. And when you encounter one that you want to replace, you simply click the Replace button. If you don't want to replace that instance, you click the Find Next button to skip that and move on to the next instance. Here's a quick demonstration of that capability. Let's go up to the top of the document, open up our Find and Replace dialog. In the Find What field, we're going to put Resignation. There may not be a lot of them, but this will find all of them. Now, we're going to go down and check the Match Case checkbox, 
and in the replace with field, let's put resignation. Now I click the find next button, and there's the first instance. If I click replace, the replacement happens, and the highlight automatically moves to the next instance. To see that next instance, you might need to drag the dialog box out of the way, but it will be visible on your screen. If at this point, I do not want to replace this instance, I simply click the Find Next button again without clicking the Replace button, and you'll be done. One of the biggest negatives of this feature is you are limited to checking and replacing only one instance at a time or the entire document at once. You do not have the option to automatically replace within selected text or on a page or in a section or in a chapter. It would be much better if we could define and limit the scope of the search. Other than this, it's a great feature, one you'll probably use more often now. I hope you have a better handle now on how to get started with find and replace operations in Microsoft Word and have a good starting place to explore all the other powerful options of this feature. It would probably be worth some time, not to mention it could be fun, to play around with these features with all the options and see what else you can do with them. If you thought this tutorial was helpful, or even could be helpful for someone you know, please share it. And also let the YouTube folks know by clicking the thumbs up button. Leave a comment if you have another technique or a question, and especially if you have a better way to do something like this. And finally, don't forget to click that subscribe button and then the bell icon to be notified whenever we post a great new tutorial from David's Tutorials.